Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Had a couple technical difficulties, but here we are. We're good. I think everything works. Maybe. There we go. I don't want that. There we go. But anyway, I'm just going to wait uh, like a minute real quick as I'm fixing up some last minute things. There we go. Okay. So today's work is going to be quite simple. In fact, I'll make a list of it. Uh, so there are some videos that we will watch. So I will watch them right now. Uh, there will also be that I'm going to, I haven't created the assignment yet, but there will be definite definitions. Uh, you'll have to turn in some definitions. You will have to turn in some definitions on uh, Google Classroom. And it's only three, so it should be pretty easy. Uh, and then questions on Khan Academy. So I'm going to put questions on K A. All right, those are three things that you guys will be doing. Now, if you want to participate or ask a question or anything like that about any of this, uh, just ask it right now. As a matter of fact, what I will do as we're waiting for some people to come in is I'm going to create that assignment right now. So let's see. Uh, I'm not going to create the definitions just yet, but Let's see, what should I call this? This will be, hmm. We'll do question, perhaps? All right, so the assignment I'm creating is question, and this is going to be uh, questions and comments on functions and relations. comment on this post uh, to participate live and okay okay ungraded students can reply to each other students can edit answer yes and then due date I mean I guess the due date would be today right uh, no. I'll make it the 30th. Make it the 30th and I'm going to ask it. All right. Thank you for your patience as people are coming in. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to go to is equations versus functions. So hopefully you've gotten to Khan Academy and hopefully in a different tab you have your Google Classroom open and go ahead and click on equations versus functions because um, this is going to be the first piece of the puzzle. I'm going to ask you to write the definition of probably equations and functions. So let's go ahead and I am going to, I'm actually going to use this to write my definitions. I would, I want you to write yours in your own words so, you know, as long as it's not word for word what I write. I mean, I guess even so, that would be okay, but see if you can phrase it in your own way because that will make your mind stronger. So let's pick equations versus functions. And hopefully, oh, we do have a good view of it. It could be bigger though. Let's try it. All right, let's try this. Maybe a little bit bigger or no? A little bit bigger. Boom. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, let's check it out. I'm here with Jesse Rowe of, of Summit Prep. You teach, what classes do you teach? I teach Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2. And now you're with us, luckily, for the summer, doing a whole bunch of stuff as a teaching fellow. Yeah, as a teaching fellow, I've been helping with organizing and developing new content, mostly on the exercise site, side of the site. And, and the reason why we're doing this right now is you had some very interesting ideas or, or questions. Yeah, so as an algebra teacher, when I introduced that concept, 
of algebra to students, I, I get a lot of questions. One of those questions is, what's the difference between an equation and a function? The difference between an equation versus a function. Well, that's, that's, that's an interesting question. Let's pause it and see, let, 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 the, let the viewers try to think about it a little bit and then, and then maybe we'll give a stab at it. Sounds great. So hold on, I'm so, gonna try this, I'm gonna try this. this question? What's the difference between an equation and a function? All right, so hold on. So I'm going to try to answer this. So an equation, uh, equation, a, I'm, oh wow, this is kind of hard. I'm gonna say an equation is when an expression When an expression is equal to another expression. Okay, that's what I think it is, right? We could look up the definition real quick, but basically I think that's true. So an equation is when an expression is equal to another expression. So for example, I'm just gonna make one up. 2x plus five equals seven x. Right? That's uh, two expressions and they equal each other, so I have an equation right here. That's my example, right? Let's see. And a function. We haven't really talked about functions much. I haven't talked about functions with everybody at all. I think I've only spoken about functions with a few people. Uh, function, uh, I'm going to write is a rule that turns an input, not even turns, erase turns, that matches, is a rule that matches an input with an output, with one output. So that's what I think it is. Let's see, let's see what happens. Let, let me let me think about it a little bit. So let me think. I, I think there's there's probably equations that are that are not functions and functions that are not equations, and then there are probably things that are both. So let me think of it that way. So let's first think of. So I'm going to draw. If this is the world of equations, right over here. This is the world of equations. So this is equations, equations, and then over here is the world of functions. That's the world of functions. I do think there is some overlap. We'll think it through what, what, where the overlap is. The world of functions. So an equation that is not a function that's sitting out here, I think you know, a simple one would be something like, is something that like x plus three is equal to 10. I'm not explicitly kind of talking about inputs and outputs or relationship between variables. I'm just stating an equivalence. Mm -hmm. the, the, the expression x plus three is equal to 10. So this, in, I think traditionally would just be an equation, would not be a function. Functions, functions essentially talk about relationships between variables. You get uh, one or more input variables and it will give you only one output variable, uh, well, output value. And so you could have something like, and you can define a function, and we'll, I'll do that in a second, you could define a function as an equation, but you can define a function a whole bunch of ways. You can visually define a function, maybe as a, as a graph. So something like this, where and maybe I actually mark off the values that's one, two, three. Those are the potential x values. And, and then on the vertical axis, I show what the value of my function is going to be, literally my function of x. Maybe that is one, two, three. And maybe this function is defined for all non-negative values. So this is zero of x. And so let me just draw So this right over here, at least for what I've drawn so far, defines that function. I didn't even have to use an equal sign. If x is two, if x is two, at least the way I drew it, y is equal to three. You give me that input, I gave you the value of only one output. So that would be a legitimate function definition. Another function definition would be very similar to what you do in a computer program. Uh, something like, um, you know, if you input, you input the day of, so let's say that it, you, you input the day of the week, you input the day of the week, and if day is equal to Monday, Monday, Maybe you output output cereal, so that's what we're going to we're going to eat that day. And otherwise, mm, like an input and an output. You output. Otherwise, you output meatloaf. 
So this would, would also would also be a function where and we only have one output for any one day of the week. We're only saying we can only tell you cereal or meatloaf. We're not there's no days where you are eating both cereal and meatloaf, which sounds kind of kind of repulsive. Uh, and, and then if I were to think about if I were to think about something that could be an equation or a function, I guess what I think about is a, an equation is is something that can be used to define a function. So for example, we could say that y y is equal to 4x minus 10. This is a potential definition for defining y as a function of x. You give me any value of x, then I can find the corresponding value of y. Oh. So this is this is at least how, how I would think about it. So here, I just want to pause it. Oh, it just I'm ended right there. You. So I wanted to pause it because that's actually very, oh man, that's very cool because let me make this large. A function has an input and an output, right? We, that's what we wrote here. A function is a rule that matches an input with one output, which is exactly what uh, was happening when he was talking about on Monday. Monday is the input. The output was cereal, is what we're going to eat. Else, so on any other day of the week, it was going to be meatloaf. The cool thing is that since a function has an input and an output, uh, they need variables for each one. So usually the variable for an input into an equation is x, right? We put in a value in x, and then the y value is uh, the output value, right? So functions have two variables. That's one thing that I wanted to include. So functions, uh, at least the ones that we work on, will have two variables. There's actually functions that have many variables that you input and then it gives you uh, some outputs, but we're just going to be working with one input, one output. Okay, that's going that's actually what a linear function does. So a function has two variables. One of them is the input. One of them is the output. An equation is when an expression equals another expression. So, so when we had a function, what was the example of the function that he wrote? Um, there's a function that he wrote that was like y equals, I think it was like y equals x plus three. This right here is an equation and it's also a function because x is the input and you input numbers into there and then it gives you a total output of y there. Okay, so like for example, if I input the value one in here, one plus three equals four, so the output value would be four, right? Anyway, that was the first video. This, uh, you might want to write this down. I'll give you a few seconds. Uh, you might want to write that down just so that way you can answer the question about the definitions. Okay. Uh, let's watch another video. So I'm going to go back to my assignment list and let's watch this. You know what? I want to, I'm going to jump right into the question assignment because that's probably the one you'll want the most guidance on but let's see so this question says rearrange the equation so that m is the independent variable so let me oh man I can use the marker on Khan Academy can't I I'm gonna try that can I oh yeah okay so let's see, rearrange the equation. So I'm gonna rewrite it over here because I don't think I have much room over there. So it's seven M plus two. Can you even see that? Oh yeah, seven M plus two equals seven N minus five. Okay, so it says rearrange so that M is the independent variable. So independent means on your own, right? So we want to uh, get M uh, independent, all right? Oh wait, hold on. Rewind, my mistake, my mistake. M, uh, do you see how they show us uh, this right here? They show us N equals blank. So that means that we need to get N by itself. And I'll explain what this independent variable Another name for the input of a function is called uh, the independent variable, all right? And then the output is the dependent variable. So long story short, let's get n by itself. 
So if we go to this, I'm going to put a little dotted line here. Okay. And I'll shrink this uh, whiteboard if needed. So to get n by itself, how would you get rid of this 7 coefficient and this minus 5 next to it? I'm going to change colors. You would get rid of, hopefully you remember, let's refresh our memory, get rid of the constant first. So get rid of the minus 5 by doing plus 5 to each side, okay? Let's refresh our memories, all right? We, I know it's been a while, but we need to do our practice here. Let me shrink this whiteboard. Very small. So let's see what we get left over after we do this line of the equation. Should I change color again? Sure. Uh, minus 5 plus 5, those are opposites, so they equal 0. So we're just left with 7n equals 7m plus uh, 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, so we almost have n by itself, all right, just like they have in the solution over here. Uh, how do we get n by itself? It says 7n, so 7 times n. How do we get rid of that 7? Hopefully at home you're screaming to the screen, you divide, you divide everything by 7, all right? Divide everything by 7, so that way we can get n by itself. So let's see, 7n divided by 7 equals 1n, and then on this side we are left with m, like 1m, plus 7 divided by 7 is 1, so n equals m plus 1. So m plus 1. Took a while, but it's all right. Boom. And all the work is right there. So please take a few seconds to jot that down. Four people viewing, thank you for being here. All right. Hopefully you've got your notebook. I'll give you a couple seconds to uh, get a notebook, get some pencil, get some paper. You know, the cool thing is that I cannot tell you to not eat. You could be eating at home. And who knows? I can't do anything about it. So enjoy, all right? This is supposed to be very, very fun. Okay, so, wow, I'm so glad to see you. All jokes aside, I am so glad to see that there are four viewers right now. Um, I hope everything is all good. I hope you've been having a good time. I hope you've uh, stayed healthy. Man, you know, it's just, we should be at school, you know? We should be at school enjoying each other's company. So, all right. Let's move on to the next problem. Let's move on to the next problem. It says, next question. So you should see m plus 1 equals negative 2 times n plus 6. And then they say they want n. Oh, I didn't explain the independent variable thing. I will do it this time. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do this on the whiteboard this time because I feel like writing. Writing is much easier than using the Khan Academy marker. So. Make that nice and large. Okay, here we go. Let's use the purple marker. We got m plus 1 equals negative 2 times n plus 6, close parentheses. So it looks like we will do some distributive property. Whenever there's parentheses, you got to remember to do that. So negative 2 times n is negative 2n, and negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And on this side, we just have this, right? OK, let's start doing our dotted line. And we are looking to get m by itself. So as you can see on this problem, I will use the marker to circle m. So m is the thing we want to get by itself. That is the dependent variable. The reason they call m the dependent variable is because it depends on what the value of n is okay so it says to get m by itself it looks like we almost have it by itself it says m plus one so how do you get rid of that plus one all you have to do is subtract one from each side and i'm going to change color just like i did on the computer uh, plus one minus one that equals zero so we are left with m equals minus two n and then minus 12 minus 1, that's minus 13, right? m equals negative 2n minus 13. Negative 2n minus 13. Let's try it. Minus 2n minus 13. 
Enter. Uh, check, I mean. There we go. Easy peasy. So this is just like when we were solving equations and getting uh, the value of y by itself. I hope you remember back in the day we were doing uh, y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. Like this is a, a sort of equation that we would graph. And I remember when we would get y by itself. So this is the exact same thing uh, that we are doing. All right. So once again, we're reviewing because this is such an important uh, skill to have as we're going into high school, uh, needing to know algebra. All right, let's look at the third question. Uh, it says here, rearrange so that r is the independent variable, so that q is the dependent variable. So solve for q. And this one also looks very easy because if we write it down, q, oh, not q plus, Q minus 10 equals 6 times R plus 1. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Q is almost by itself already. So first I'm going to do distributive property just because that's what you should do when you see parentheses. 6 times R is 6R. 6 times 1 is 6. And then bring down Q minus 10. Okay. Then you want to get Q by itself, so Q just has a minus 10 next to it. How do you get rid of minus 10? You do the opposite. Plus 10, plus 10 on each side. And we are left with Q, 1Q equals, that looks like A, hold on. There we go, Q equals 6R plus, uh, you do the addition here, you get 6 plus 10 is 16. And so 6R plus 16 is what q equals and this is probably going to be the last exercise i will leave you on so 6 r plus 16 again oh okay so i want to take take a look at what we're looking at right here before i hit submit so in this equation the independent variable otherwise known as the input is r all right the reason they call that the independent variable is because this number doesn't depend on any other number. You just get to choose what your input is, all right? You get to choose what your input is. This right here, Q, that's going to be your output. And the output, so the total answer, is going to depend on what R is. So that's why this one they call the dependent variable, all right? Basically, you just have to know that um, which variable is the dependent one, it's, it's the one that depends on the input. So the dependent variable is always going to be the output. All right, That's why I put these two words together, because the output is always the dependent variable, and the input is always the independent variable. Okay. If they ever ask anything about independent, dependent, um, there you go. So I'm going to hit next, I believe that. And the final question, it looks like they have you solve for y, and it looks like y is almost by itself. So I am going to let you do this one on your own. Um, if you need to know how to solve this one, please look at the examples we just did. You want to get y by itself? It's almost by itself right there. If you look carefully and you remember to use distributive property. So there we go. Uh, oh, yeah. And then should I do? Yeah, I think I'm going to do and do something real quick. So so I am going to create. Oh, look at that. Someone commented. Who commented? I can't even I. What is this? Oh, huh. reply. Uh, I'm actually just gonna
answer these questions in a full sentence or more, period. And I'm capitalizing randomly, so that's bad. Okay, uh, boom, that is it. So due date, boom. Okay, so I have, I have saved this assignment. I'm gonna go ahead and, okay. So hopefully you wrote down this equation, you did the distributive property and you got Y by itself and then your answer should be an expression that has like X and some number in it, okay? Uh, I will talk to you all soon. And I believe that is it for right now. So, oh wow, time flies. Okay, have a great morning, have a great day. All right, stay safe.